I want to I want to read something that the uh, chief of the U.S. Border Patrol, who just left the Border Patrol, Rodney Scott, wrote to uh, Schumner, uh, Schumer and Mitch McConnell and uh, uh, Peters and uh, Portman on September 11th, 2021. Now, he has been not allowed to say anything. He's starting now to get out from underneath his, all of his, you know, uh, sworn duty uh, things so, so he can actually start to actually talk to people. You know what I mean? Yeah. He writes, in the position of chief of the U.S. Border Patrol, it's a career civil service position and not a political appointment. As chief, I was the most senior official responsible for border security in the ports of entry. I witnessed an unprecedented seismic shift in our border security and immigration policy that was initiated January 20th, 2021. I believe this policy shift and the associated public statements created the current border crisis of greater concern. I also witnessed the lack of any meaningful effort to secure our borders. Contrary to the current rhetoric, this is not simply another illegal immigration surge. This is a national security threat. This thing is horrifying, just horrifying. Today on the 20th anniversary of the horrific 9-11 terrorist attacks, I reflect on the significant border security advances that we had made. I'm sickened by the avoidable and rapid disintegration of what was arguably the most effective border security in our nation's history. Common sense border security recommendations from experienced career professionals are being ignored and stymied by inexperienced political appointees. The Biden administration's team at DHS is laser focused on expediting the flow of migrants. Listen to that. The Biden's administration's DHS is laser focused on expediating the flow of migrants into the U.S. and downplaying the significant vulnerability this creates for terrorists, narcotics, smugglers, human traffickers, even hostile nations to gain access to our homeland. In my professional assessment, the U.S. Border Patrol is rapidly losing the situational awareness required to know who and what is entering in our homeland. The ability of the U.S. Border Patrol to detect and interdict those that want to evade apprehension is being degraded daily. Low-level, unsophisticated, and uneducated smugglers are illegally crossing the border and increasingly invading, evading ha- apprehension daily. To think that well-sourced terrorist networks, criminal organizations, and hostile nations are not doing the same is naive. The current situation is unsustainable and must be mitigated. Experienced, secret, uh, uh, experienced civil service staff within CBP, ICE, and DHF have provided multiple options to reduce the illegal alien, uh, alien entries and reestablish some semblance of border security through proven programs and consequences. Yet every recommendation has been summary, uh, 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 summary, say it, Stu. Summarily? Thank you. Rejected. Okay. <laughs> Secretary Mayorkas <laughs> is choosing to ignore the sound recommendations of career government leadership, despite his own admissions that he agrees with them. Of grave concern is the fact that Secretary and other political appointees within DHF have provided factually incorrect information to congressional representatives and to the American public. Try that one on for size. He's saying the DHS now with the Biden administration is lying to Congress and lying to the American people. Furthermore, they have directed the U.S. Border Patrol to allow otherwise ineligible aliens to remain in the U.S. inconsistent with CDT, uh, CDC Title 42, blah, blah, blah. As a direct result of these decisions, control of our borders has disintegrated overnight. While the sheer volume of aliens is overwhelming, it is critical that policymakers understand that these mass incursions are simply not an immigration issue. These illegal entries are being scripted and controlled by plaza bosses that work directly for the transnational criminal organizations to create controllable gaps in border security. These gaps are then exploited to easily smuggle contraband, 
criminals, or even potential terrorists into the U.S. at will. Even when the U.S. Border Patrol detects the illegal entry, agents are spread so thin that they often uh, lack the capability to make a timely interdiction. It is important to remember that a border is not a destination. It is just a transit point en route to our cities and towns throughout the U.S. This is not hyperbole. I urge you to request detailed information from DHS CBP on the number of individuals with terrorist screening database alerts that the USBP has arrested this fiscal year. Stu, let's see if we can get a FOIA on that. Okay. Um, To ensure you that you are not misled, please specifically ask for comparative data from previous years broken down by method of apprehension, encounter, and immigration status at the time of the encounter. Isn't that amazing? He's writing this to Congress and to the Senate, and he's saying, let me, let me give you that again, uh, to ensure that you are not misled. Right. They'll release information that's unimportant to this point, right? Wow. They'll, they'll just avoid. Or they'll redact. That's the other thing they do all the time. I also encourage you to ask questions about the surge in USBP personnel assigned to the border in Texas. What national security and public health risks are we knowingly accepting in the areas these agents were pulled from? How many miles of borders are now going uncontrolled daily to facilitate expedited processing and ultimately the release of these illegal aliens in the U.S.? What threats are we allowing into the U.S. by continuing to accept a thousand documented gotaways every day? What programs or IT system developments have been shut down or significantly delayed due to limited resources being redirected to the mass migration crisis? What impact has the current crisis had on the ability of the Border Patrol to conduct thorough debriefings of individuals to determine intentions, threat, and to document transnational criminal activity? He goes into the numbers, which are just staggering. In addition to the clear national security implications of an uncontrolled border, it's unconscionable that as COVID-19 continues to spread, DHS would choose to voluntarily carve out policy exceptions to Title 42. These carve-outs do not appear to comport with any medical assessments that I have read. These policy carve-outs are unquestionably placing the lives of Border Patrol personnel, U.S. citizens, and the migrants themselves at increased risk. In October 2020, over 91% of total encounters by Border Patrol were processed under T-42 and expelled in an average of 90 minutes. I report A report I received on August 1, 2021, indicate that nearly 53% were being granted exemptions from T-42, with the majority ultimately being released into the United States. Now, that's, that's... basically saying they don't have to have any kind of COVID test. Border Patrol lacks the adequate facilities and resources to conduct COVID testing without significantly increasing the risk of exposure and further degrading our border security. Therefore, any COVID testing is conducted on a voluntary basis by private non-governmental institutions. There's no mandated vaccine prior to release. Processing an alien that illegally enters the U.S. under T-42 authority can be accomplished in approximately 10 minutes while avoiding congregate settings where COVID-19 exposure would be increased. Consequently, processing an individual under Title VIII to include a notice to appear takes approximately two hours and is completed inside an enclosed processing center. If the alien will be transferred to ICE... Vice released immediately on their own recognizance or the time in custody will increase even further, 72 hours. Oh, my gosh. He goes on and on and says how really. Well, I'll give you this. I am extremely confident that the Biden administration, to include Secretary Mayorkas, are fully aware of the significant operational risk and the monetary costs associated with all of these pauses at which times reportedly exceed $5 million a day. It's important that we have 
uh, that we address the issues directly associated with the Border Patrol's mission. As a senior executive leader within the, uh, the uh, Border Patrol, I was also privy to discussions that negatively affected security and legitimate trade and travel operations at our ports of entry. I, I hope Rodney Scott uh, testifies. I hope Rodney Scott. I hope Rodney Scott becomes a name that everybody knows. This guy is extraordinarily brave. He tried to work within the system. Um, but they just kept crushing and crushing and crushing. He is now retired, and he is speaking out. <laughs> Will anyone listen? That's the, that's the real question. It doesn't seem like there's been a ton of interest from the media in this. There's not. You had that burst in March, as we kind of mentioned earlier, and you had the burst when some of the footage came out, but it was really all from Fox News and conservative sources. The only thing that has brought the media to the party here when we're talking about the border are these pictures of uh, border agents on horses, which now gives them a way to say that the border agents are bad. Now it's no longer a humanitarian crisis. Now they they can just say, well, look at how ho- horrible we are with, with immigrants on the border. And maybe AOC can show up in her new watch and outfit and cry again at an empty fence. I guess that's the, the next step here. But I, it does seem like there is a there's no interest unless they can come up with an angle that backs up the idea of oppression and all of these other things, as opposed to what's happening to these people who, you know, some of them are actually just out there to break the law. Some of them believe they're they're completely within what the administration wants. Within the oh, I think they are. They're there because they think they've been invited to be yes. there. And that doesn't mean we should let them in, but it does mean that, you know, it's a different situation than, um, than some previous border out, outbreaks. Uh, not to mention, you know, when you're speaking of outbreaks, as he mentions in the letter, serious concern here with COVID. I mean, we keep talking about, they keep talking about, well, we need to get everybody vaccinated for COVID. Why are you, th- why are you not vaccinating then people coming in from other countries? And you might think, okay, well, you know, they're on the border. Uh, what are they going to do? They have doses of the vaccine there. They, they, they offer them, but if they say no, they don't make them take, take them. Excuse me? They have Johnson & Johnson doses at the border. Um, available. And if they say no, if they say no, they're so like, well, the we're illegal... going to respond. Look, it's a personal choice, guys. Oh I mean, my. you can't. Ma- what are we going to do? Mandate the vaccine? Yes, that's what you've been doing to regular citizens who want to go to their jobs. People who actually are supposed to be in the country. That's what you keep doing to them. You're making kids mask up, but you won't make uh, the little, very least we could do is ask them. Uh, and make them take the vaccine if they want to somehow come into the country. And by the way, the question, if you remember this back and forth with Jen Psaki and uh, Peter Ducey the other day, Peter Ducey didn't even say, it was reported, like, shouldn't we be mandating these vaccines? That's not the question Peter Ducey asked. He said, shouldn't we be, either, are, we asking, uh, are we asking them if they're vaccinated and they have proof of vaccination? Or they have to complete a test. And the answer was, well, look, they're only going to be here for a few days and they're not intending to be here. And they're not, sh- if they show symptoms, then we're, and she came up with all these BS it's excuses. Asymptoma- they keep lecturing us that we asympt- have to have mm-hmm. the vaccine because we're asymptomatic. Right. And asymptomatic we're transmission. Yes. Right. Which obviously this is a much easier disease and, uh, to deal with if there is no asymptomatic uh, transmission. So obviously we're well beyond that point here, but, but. But in that question was an option to just test them. And even that she didn't say we were doing. Now, that is built into the Biden mandate as well. This one that's been proposed. But shockingly, no rule has actually been written yet. I don't know if anyone's noticed this. They just don't seem to be coming up with this rule. They made this big announcement two days before September 11th when he was in the middle of dealing with all of the press uh, catastrophes of Afghanistan after two consecutive months of growth in the rate of vaccination. We doubled the rate. Then he comes out with a mandate? And Makes uh, no sense. And by the way, he doesn't have to do the mandate. The corporations are doing it for him.